Welcome back to Job Week 3. I hope that the journey so far has been one that's inspirational and encouraging to you. I'm going to start by um, reading the scriptures, Job 1, 1 through 3. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that was man was blameless, upright, fearing God, and turning away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. His possessions also were seven thousand sheep, three thousand camels, five hundred yoke of oxen, five hundred female donkeys, and very many servants. And that man was the greatest of all men of the East. I want to say that Job knew his God. He knew him by name, and God knew his Job by name and by his character. Let's just take a minute to look at Job and his character. From the scriptures, we can glean that he is blameless, upright, fearing God, and turning away from evil. Job's character spoke loudly of his fear of God and the matters of importance in his heart. Let's look at his character. Job was blameless, the scriptures say. And looking at the Hebrew, the word for blameless here is T-A-M, pronounced Tom, T-A-W-M. And it means gentle, dear, pious. So if we put Job's name in, we see that Job was gentle and dear and pious. It is an adjective meaning integrity and completeness. This is a rare, almost exclusively poetic term, often translated perfect, but not carrying the sense of totally free from fault. Let's remember that Job was human, and though we may be Tom, or complete, pious and gentle in the Lord, we walk with and among terrible sin and suffering. We walk in a fallen world. It is only through Jesus Christ that we can be totally free from fault. Job was upright, or yashar, Y-A-S-H-A-R. He was honest and straight. He was right in an emotional, ethical sense. He was agreeable. Job was pleasing. Job feared the Lord, or Yare, Y-A-R-E. He was cautious. He revered his God. Job turned away from evil. This is a verb, or S-U-W-R, and it requires action, as verbs do. This is not a passive voice. He actively avoided, ceased, and kept far away from evil. Of all of Job's possessions, his character is listed first, and I believe it to be his greatest asset and his greatest treasure. Think about you. What does your lifestyle, your choices, and your reactions say about your character? Is there room for improvement in that character? The fruits of the Spirit test should give a compass to things we can develop through the Lord. Job had some serious stuff. He is noted as, quote, the greatest man in the East. Job's stuff will not keep him from suffering trials. There's no security in stuff, in possessions. There's no security in things and acquisitions of this world. How many times do we chase after a new gadget, lust for a new object, only to get it and feel like the chase was the best part? We cannot stockpile and hoard our way into security. Life is going to happen, and life sometimes hurts. Sometimes we suffer, and sometimes things just don't make sense. Stuff was not the answer for Job. 
possess possessions should not be our source or our destination. Job was rich. Job, Job was esteemed in his culture. He had status, a reputation. How many times can we get stuck in what others think of us? I do believe that our testimony and how we live our life is the largest gospel presentation we as Christians give. I believe that we, quote, preach the gospel through our everyday actions when no one is looking. To be blameless, upright, and to fear the Lord while turning away from evil. To be this person when no one is looking. To treat people with respect and dignity when no one is looking. To love those who hurt us and to reach out a hand to those who need us, regardless of how they look. Job had character that far outweighed his riches. Job was focused on God. It would seem that all the rest just happened. He was a blessed, blessed man. The Bible says that it's easier for a camel to fit through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. Matthew 19, 24. What are we focusing on? Where is our strength and our security? Job's character was listed first. What would you list as your greatest treasure? For many of us, our children are listed. Job's character was listed as his first treasure. For where your heart is, there your treasure is also. Matthew 6.21 Our treasure can be in pleasing man and being praised. Our treasures can be in riches and in wealth. Our treasure can be in status and position. Our treasure can be in ministry, finding our identity in Christ through our ministries, not through Him. Our treasure can be in arrogance over knowledge of the Word, forgetting to live the Gospel through a heart of love. With our wicked, wicked hearts, our treasures have so many places to fall other than in the heart of our Savior and with our feet resting on the solid foundation of Elohim. As we undertake this journey together, let's agree to not worship our blessings. Rather, let's worship Him that bestows all good things. In addition, let us also agree from the onset to worship Him that makes it to rain on the wicked as well as on the righteous. We will agree to document our blessings, not as a means of, of to get earthly gain. We won't worship in order to get earthly gain, but as an act of worship for him and all that he does and the thousand ways he makes his presence known in our lives and in our hearts. I just love God, don't you? I'll see you next time for Job Week 4. Be blessed beyond compare.